Fortescue doing pretty well on the back of this upgrade as well. I think the stock up uh, almost 3% today. It is a big outperformer actually, up 2.5% on a day where the broader materials sector is only managing gains of around 0.2% and the broader market only up about a quarter of a percent. Uh, it's been upgraded to overweight by Morgan Stanley. Samfire Resources on the other hand has fallen over 1% today. It was downgraded to a neutral uh, recommendation by UBS. But yes, Morgan Stanley said that they are more confident in the ramp up uh, coming on schedule for Fortescue in uh, ramping up their production. Now financing was a bit of a big issue for Fortescue over the the past year or so it appears that sort of moved to the back now uh, following some successful bond um, issuances uh, around five billion dollars worth so now the keys for Fortescue moving forward will certainly be uh, keeping on schedule and on budget ramping up their production to 155 million tons and of course the iron ore price we saw the iron ore price come back to 120 dollars a ton uh, overnight and that was a previously uh, important level for Fortescue that was flagged in the past. Uh, Sanfire on the other hand, copper prices have been suffering um, over the past week or so. Sanfire was quite a, a good performing stock but it's fallen almost 10% over the past four days. Uh, weakness in the copper price, uh, certainly they've had some success in exploration and turning that into project development. But now that looks to be pretty fully priced in for this stock and they'll need to see their Degrussa project uh, to expand further um, to and ramp up further to see uh, this stock continue to climb. Uh, in the copper space though you might be looking at another stock such as Panost. Even though their leverage to copper has been falling, uh, their gold production has been increasing. Um, in terms of earnings and production growth it does look a little more attractive than uh, Samfire Resources. Tim, also Flight Centre holding its annual general meeting today. What can you tell us about what shareholders heard there? Well, Flight Centre has been a solid performer. Past year, up 32%, um, a very good performance uh, over the broader market. Uh, they've con con consistently grown earnings. Um, they've consistently beaten expectations in the market as well. And certainly moving forward, their corporate division will be a big driver as uh, le leisure business has been slowing down a little bit. Uh, today it is trading slightly lower. Uh, we saw some comments from the company, even though uh, they're looking to keep uh, the full year uh, uh, growth 5 to 8 percent is in line. Uh, the, the first quarter so far, July um, and August, uh, they were pretty good, but September, was a little, uh, as the company said, did miss their expectations a little bit. So economic conditions continue to be a little bit uncertain, but moving forward, that corporate earnings, uh, the corporate earnings which make up about 40% of the business now will be a significant driver. In that corporate travel space in Australia they are now the number one player. They make up around 20% of the market share in what is quite a fragmented market. And you look through the world, uh, in the UK they're around the fifth largest and in the US they're about the eighth largest and in those sectors they are continuing to grow market share. Uh, so looking forward I think this company will continue to exceed expectations really driven by their corporate business. Um, even though their, the leisure business has started to slow somewhat. And finally, Tim, very low volumes continuing on the market today. Do you take much uh, notice of the price action or, at all on a day like this? It is a very quiet day, only around $1.4 billion traded on the market so far. Yesterday I only saw $2.7 billion, so we're on track for a very quiet day again today. Obviously US markets closed, um, some quite incredible scenes coming over from that Hurricane Sandy in the east coast of the US. Uh, but looking over the past uh, results of hurricanes for the S&P 500 over significant events, it actually hasn't had too much of a uh, negative effect on the US market. Uh, in the three months after significant hurricanes, the S&P 500 has climbed 3.9%, while in the six month period after a hurricane, uh, it's climbed on average around 5%. Uh, so we're seeing on the Australian market today the insurance sector uh, reacting adversely to this uh, IAG, Suncorp, QBE. They're all trading around 1% lower. Interestingly, uh, James Hardy, uh, trading around half a percent higher. Um, they certainly have a lot of leverage to US construction so significant impacts from this hurricane would actually be uh, would be a positive for James Hardy. But uh, if we have a look at the ASX 200 chart at the moment we've seen a significant run up in the in the market and there's a bottom trend line that's been holding since the start of June here and we've just moved back towards that line. Uh, so it will be important over the next few days that this, uh, the ASX 200 index holds above the 4460 to 4470 level and not break that trend line and of course if we don't break that trend line we'd like to see the uh, the market rally above the previous high which was 45.70 so again a very quiet day on the market we're up around quarter of a percent